magic you will see on this program is done without the use of trick photography or studio effects. What you see at home is exactly as it is being performed in the studio. <laughs> I'm Casey Michael, and welcome to our Magic Planet. On today's show, you'll see magical entertainer Scott Miller perform some of his, of his favorite close-up magic. You'll also see and meet Scotty Hill from Tree People and learn why trees are so important to our planet. But first, I'd like to show you a trick that I'll be teaching you later on in the show. We're gonna use as an envelope. What I've done is I've cut a notch in the envelope and run a ribbon through it. I've created a tunnel. Now you can see that the ribbon goes from one side to the other. What I'm gonna do is fold the envelope in half and cut the envelope and the ribbon. Now for the magic. Say the magic words, Sim Salabim. Voila, the ribbon is restored. You might want to get ready an envelope, a pair of scissors, and a piece of ribbon. String or even an old shoelace will work. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Scott Miller. Scott has performed magic all over the world, as well as teaching and lecturing on the subject. Scott Miller. Thank you, Chris. I've invited a couple of people up here to help me out today. Um, what's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay. Nice to meet you, Lindsay. How are you doing today? And your name? Larissa. Larissa. I tell you what, I brought along a couple of special things to show you today. And I'm going to start off with this one and we'll get back to it in a little bit. I've got a deck of 52 playing cards here. They're all different. Of course, that makes them real easy to use. Okay? And Larissa, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just cut off a small packet of cards. Now, are you, are you happy with that amount, or you want some more, or you want a little less, or? A little more. You want a little more? Yeah. Okay, you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, what I want you to do is place them right there on my palm, okay? And what I want you to do now is take the next card that you cut to there, take the card and tear it in half for me. Okay, now put those in Tear them in half again. And tear them in half one more time. So now we've made many little pieces with the cards. Now what I'm going to do is destroy those cards just a little bit further. And the reason I'm going to do this is because later on I'm hopefully going to show you how we can make these pieces go back together. There's a little story with it that I want to tell you about. Now we'll just let this cook a little while right inside there. We'll just let that cook there for a little bit and we'll come back to that when it's done, okay? And in the meantime, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to show you something really special that I brought along. Now this is something that I've created. This is one of my own tricks. I hope you'll like it. It involves a couple of coins. One coin is a 1967 silver half dollar. Take a look at that. 
Make sure that it's solid. There's nothing tricked about it. The reason I like using the 67 silver coins is because the 67 was the last of a dying breed, the last of its kind. After 67, they didn't use silver in the coins. Also, 67 was the year I started doing magic. And the silver coins have a certain magical quality. Whoops, try that again. Certain magical musical quality. It used to be when you had a pocket full of silver coins, you had a musical adventure in your pocket. Now, the other coin I have is a 1967 English penny. Here, take a look at that one. Take a close look. Make sure it doesn't bend or anything like that. doesn't. Uh, since 1967, they've shrunk the penny down. They've made it quite a bit smaller. I guess they didn't like the big pocket change. If you had a whole pocket full of pennies, <laughs> you'd have a very weighted down pocket. Lindsay, what I want you to do is hold out your hand, palm up. I'm going to take these two coins and I'm going to set them on the palm of your hand. Now you'll notice that I use nothing else except my two hands and the two coins. There's nothing else there. I'm going to do everything very slowly and very deliberate so that you can see exactly what's going on, okay? I'm not going to do any funny moves at all, all right? What I want you to do is take your other hand and put it over the top of the two coins like you're holding a large ball crossways. There you go. But leave all the nooks and crannies around your fingers closed so there's no way I can get either one of those two coins out, okay? Now. What I'm going to attempt to do is take one of those two coins out of your hands, hopefully by magic. What I want you to do is check to see if they're there. Don't open your hands. Bring them up to your ear, turn them over real quick, listen for them to clink. Turn them over in your hands. You hear them clink? Come back down. Okay. Now, name one of the two coins, copper or silver. Mm, I like silver. You like silver? You remember what the silver coin looked like? It was in 1967. Right. You remember what it looked like laying in the palm of your hand? Yeah, it was a... It had head. Okay. I want you to concentrate and remember that coin in the palm of your hand. Okay? Because I'm going to try to take the copper coin out, just like this, and place it on the palm of my hand. Now, I've got the copper coin here. Hopefully, you still have the silver coin there. Let's check again. Bring them up. Turn them over. Listen for them to clink. Bring them back down. What do you feel? Um, Shake them around inside. What do you feel inside? One. One? You do. Open your hands. You have the silver. And I have the copper. You looked at it. Now let's get back to the card. I'll tell you what. There's a story about the phoenix. Now, the phoenix is a mythological bird, so they say, that was burned and rose from the ashes. Now, the funny thing about trees and our planet is, is that if we keep doing what we're doing to our planet, we're not going to have anything except what's left in this jar is a bunch of ashes. So we have to do what we can to recycle. I brought along a paper here and hopefully I can show you just exactly what that would look like. If I take the ashes, we sprinkle them in the paper. Then with magic, hopefully we can do what we can do to bring back the card. your card? Yep. Thank you very much for helping me out today and you too. Joining us now to give a presentation on the organization Tree People is Mr. Scotty Hill. Take it away Scotty. Thank you. Tree People is a nonprofit environmental organization that lives in the heart of Los Angeles. We teach children and adults about the planting of trees in our cities and in our local mountains and how to get involved in helping the earth. 
Today's program, uh, we're going to talk about trees and you. Trees are the lungs of the earth. They provide us with oxygen. In fact, if you, you get out an encyclopedia after the show today, or a dictionary, look at a picture of a human lung. And if you turn it upside down, it even kind of looks like a tree. Trees are important. They also do many other things, but if we lost trees, the world would cease to exist in the way we know it today. Some of the tr things that trees give us is um, beauty. Besides that, they help cool our planet. Um, they also give us lots of other things, too, like fruits, for instance. They also give us nuts, like these macadamia nuts right here, and this acorn that the Native Americans used to use a lot in their foods. Another thing are corks. And corks come from the, the bark of a tree, from a cork oak, actually. We can also get rubber from trees without hurting them. Animals need trees. Some animals need to, to um, kill the trees. Other ones just live on parts of the trees and, or, or trees that are old. Um, this is from a beaver, and this was part of its house. This is another part of a tree that a bird lived in, a woodpecker. Other things we can get from trees are coffee beans to make coffee. We can also get nuts like our coconut, which I'm sure a lot of people like to eat. We can get cones from trees. A lot of seeds we can get from these uh, that, that we'd like to eat, eat, like pinion pine. We can get medicine from this tree. This is a eucalyptus, actually a silver dollar eucalyptus. You can make medicine, such as Vicks Vapor Rub or maybe cough drops. You can also get from another tree, a bay tree or bay leaf tree, you could put this in spaghetti sauce to make your spaghetti sauce taste better or maybe in stews and soups and such. Other things we get from trees is olives or we can make olive oil from the olives. We can also get maple syrup or we can get walnut oil too. Of course, we can get walnuts from the trees too. We can get different kinds of spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. Nutmeg is from um, more of a seed and the cinnamon is the bark of the tree. We can get chocolate or carob from trees. Here's some little chips right here. I don't know if you guys can all see that today. Now, things that we get from trees that usually we have to cut down the trees are other things. Um, one of them is chopsticks. And you can see I've got two different pairs of chopsticks here, one of which we can wash and use again. Now, these chopsticks right here, both of the chopsticks I'm showing you right now are from Rainforest, are the ones you get in a lot of restaurants in the city. You take them apart, you use them once, and then you throw them away. You're throwing away trees when you do that. Other things that we get from trees that the trees lose their lives from are pencils. We can also have cooking utensils. We can have things like rulers and drumsticks. We can have parts of musical instruments like these bongos right here, the bottom parts of these bongos, and this harmonica. The middle part of this is wood. Other kinds of food, maybe this heart of palm, which comes out of the middle of the palm tree. We have a cymbal, which is another musical instrument. We come over here. We have a wooden plate. We have a book. Matter of fact, this is the book that tree people did about planting trees. But books are made from paper that comes from trees. How about a skateboard? Skateboards come from trees too. Most, okay? We also have a picture frame here. And the picture frame, matter of fact, it's got a butterfly that comes from the Amazon in the, in the jungle, but the frame is made from wood, which comes from trees. Scientists 
and, and rainforest organizations agree right now that over an acre of trees is disappearing every second. That's over 100 acres a, a minute currently is, is being lost, over 30 million trees per minute. Just last year in our old growth forest, over a million acres of trees fell because of the being cut down. These old growth forests are trees that are over 250 years old and could be over 1,000 years old. The, according to the United States Food and Agriculture Department, um, last year one tree is planted for every tree, 10 trees that are taken. Sounds pretty discouraging, huh? Well, what, what can you do about it? First of all, you can become a member of an environmental organization like Tree People and learn about the problems in the environment and, and what you can do about them. Some of them we're talking about today. Recycling is also a very important thing. And over here I have some things that we want to talk about recycling. For instance, we could look at diapers. Now this is a diaper that's, that's made, that's got some plastic. It might have some things that might biodegrade eventually, but for things to biodegrade, they have to have air and they have to have sun, okay? And if they're underneath the ground and there, there's no sun or air, they're not going to biodegrade. Now instead of using a diaper like this, a baby approximately would use 9,000 diapers in, during its lifetime before it wouldn't need diapers anymore. Wouldn't it be better to use a cloth diaper like this one that could be washed over and over again? Can you imagine 9,000 diapers, how much that would equal to in, if it, you just saw that in a big pile? It's a lot of diapers. Other things we can do is recycle. Every time we recycle paper, we're, 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 we're taking care of the planet by saving trees. You know, a four-foot stack of, of newspapers equals a tree between 30 and 35 feet tall. So if you throw away paper, you're throwing away trees. Other things we get, of course, is cardboard, which we can recycle. Now, the paper and the cardboard, we don't get so much money for, but we're more concerned about caring for the earth and quit throwing away all these things. How about a glass bottle? We get glass from sand, which comes from our beaches and our deserts. When we throw that away, we're throwing away animal homes and a lot of more gas and oil it takes to, to make a new bottle out of sand than it does to make a, a new bottle out of an old bottle. How about our plastics? We have a lot of plastics, and this kind of plastic could be recycled. For every two plastic bottles, two aluminum cans, or two glass bottles that you bring into a recycling center that say California Redemption on them, you'll get a nickel. So that's really important. Now, of course, of course the plastic, okay, doesn't come from sand, it comes from oil. And when we recycle plastics, we're saving oil from all over the place. You could think of some of the problems we've had with oil in the past. The war that we just had was pretty bad, and that was over oil. And then when you look at the Valdez that crashed in, in Alaska, look at all the oil that dripped out of that and, and spilled into the ocean and killed lots of fish and birds and other kinds of animals. How about aluminum? Now, a lot of people recycle aluminum cans, but they don't do aluminum foil and old pans and stuff like that, but it's important to recycle all aluminum. They have to strip mine whole mountains for this. That's destroying whole mountains just to throw away cans or aluminum foil. So it's really important to do that, okay? Now, instead of going to the market, a lot of people might go to the market, and I, I have another bag here, but usually people would say plastic or paper, right? Okay? Well, you might want to take something like this instead, a cloth bag with you. Then when you're through, getting, after you get your groceries, you tell them to put that, your, all your groceries in here, and afterwards, you can put them and fold them all up and put them away, and you're not throwing away trees and more oil, okay? Another thing, when you're bringing your lunch to school, maybe you might want to put it in a Tupperware container or in a cloth bag in Tupperware container, okay? Other things, cups. I mean, wouldn't this be a lot better to use a paper cup than something made out of this styrofoam that's really hard to recycle, hard to find a place that will take it? Or if you're in the market, instead of getting, getting an egg carton that's made out of styrofoam, get a paper one. So a lot of things can recycle. Using containers like this, okay, or other ones, excuse me, okay, like this one right here, these things are, are pretty hard to recycle. Almost impossible. This right here has got paper, plastic, and metal in it. I only know of one place in California that's taking these, and that's, that's not too good. So you might want to buy something that's made out of glass or, or metal that's easier to recycle. Okay? Um, trees give us a lot of things, and, and, and a lot of important things. And, and we have to 
we have to try to keep them around as long as we can because we're going to be gone if we don't. Uh, one of the things that trees give us is, is paper like we talked about before and you could stop a lot of junk mail from coming to your house which is probably 50 to 80 percent of your trash that comes in your home is stuff that you haven't asked for and you don't want but it could send to your house anywhere in the way and usually it ends up in the, in the dump because it goes into your wastebasket. Well you could take those things and save them for now and recycle them and in the meantime you could write an uh, organization that will get you to stop that won't, you won't get any more of this, of this junk mail. That you, you don't want junk mail to come to your house anymore. Planting trees in your community at home or with tree people is another really big important thing that you can, you can do in your local mountains and city. In fact, there is probably going to be a planting happening in the future near you in the next couple months or so. Um, you can find out about those plantings by calling 818-753-4626. If you have an interest in learning other things that you could do with tree people in your neighborhood, you might go through our citizen forestry workshop and you could call 753-4607 for that. To get uh, a calendar of events or more information about tree people, send a self-addressed self stamped envelope to 12601 Mulholland Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90210. Make sure to write a note along without stating what information you want. So there's many things that you could do and, and whatever you do, make that step the day. Do it today, every day is Earth Day. Well, thanks a lot, Scotty. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow, I did, so tree people can teach us how to plant trees and make our planet more green. Yes, they sure can. That's interesting. I didn't know that you can stop the junk mail. I know I get junk mail at my house all the time, mm -hmm. and I'd like to put it into that. Great. Could you tell me how this organization, Tree People, got started? What, what's its origin? Well, it was started by a boy that was 15 years old. A boy? Mm-hmm. Wow. And he went up to the local mountains, up to the San Bernardino Mountains, um, with his camp. And they were up there, and one day, uh, the naturalist was speaking about the trees dying in the San Bernardino Mountains. And uh, the reason why they're dying is because of the pollution, the air pollution, the smog that comes from cars. Mm. So he found out about this, and he felt really sad about it. And he goes, isn't there anything we could do about it? And he goes, well, it's nice because there are trees that could breathe smog and still do fine, smog-tolerant trees. And the naturalist um, told him about this. He goes, well, and Annie says, well, why don't you plant smog tolerant trees all over the local mountains. He goes, and the natural says, what do you expect to do, replant all the forest? So Andy felt kind of discouraged. So that night, he went and, and talked to the campfire and to some of the other campers and, um, or, and the counselors, and they decided that they wanted to plant some trees as part of their week that they were gonna be there. Wow. So there was an old parking lot and also an old baseball field that wasn't being used by the camp anymore. So they all got together, they got some trees together, and they replanted that whole area. Incredible. Mm hmm that And so, yeah, so it, after that, it just kept on going. And Andy is about 37 years old today, and he's still doing it today, along with other people, like maybe yourself, even. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh-huh. See you, Scotty. All right. Okay, as promised, it's time to teach you the magic trick that you saw at the beginning of the program. But first, I have to teach you the magician's oath. Never tell the secret of how a trick is done. Always practice a trick before you perform it. Never do a trick twice for the same audience. Now that you know the oath, we can begin teaching you the effect. Did you get your props? Remember an envelope, a ribbon, and a pair of scissors. Now the secret to this trick is in the way that the envelope is prepared. Let me show you the back. See that? I'm going to show you right now how to prepare an envelope like this. From the front, it appears as though the ribbon goes from one side through a tunnel to the other side. Now to prepare the envelope, first start off by cutting a triangular shape and one on the other side. All right, next is to cut the slot. Now you have to be careful when you do this. Your fingers have to go into the envelope 
and then you cut a slot with the scissors, being careful not to cut your flesh. One slot goes to the left of the middle, like so. There's one. And then you cut another one exactly like that right here. It ends up looking like this. Finally, you can thread the ribbon through from one side out through the hole, into the other hole, and out of the other side. And you're ready to perform. What you do is show the envelope, pull the ribbon through so they can see that it passes all the way through, but we know better. Fold the envelope in half, and to get rid of any slack, pull on the, pull on the ribbon. Next, you can go ahead and cut, saying that you're cutting the envelope and the ribbon. Do some magic words. Simsalabim and just pull the ribbon right out. And that's magic. Well, that's all the time we have for now. If you'd like any information on what you've seen and heard today, or instructions on, how, on the trick that we just did, all you have to do is write us. Please make sure that you include your name, address, city, and zip code. Thanks for watching. I'm Casey Michael, and remember, this is the only planet we have. Let's not lose the magic in it.